Good evening. Um, elders, I too would like your permission to speak. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, it, is, it is an honor to be a part of this discussion tonight. And um, for my contribution, I want to look at the, the narrative that Ian alluded to in his introduction. And in a lot of the readings that I came across on the Burma Road riot, there was a kind of theme of, among all of them. And it was the idea that the riot came as a surprise. You know, people weren't really expecting it. And that made me pause each time. Because in what world do you subject people to overt racism, clear oppression, right? And just expect them to sit down and relax, right? If anything, you should be expecting some sort of pushback, right? And the surprise should be if they allow you to do it, right? You shouldn't be surprised that they decided to fight against this, right? But because, and much like what Ian said, right, we have this narrative that we are told about ourselves as Bahamian, right? And that narrative is that we are docile, we're peaceful, we're um, friendly. Friendly is the most important one, right? And it was true in 1942, and it's still true today, that this is the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves. This is the story that we tell our children about our identity. It's fueled by the tourism machine, right? We are taught about our own identity, that the most important thing about our identity is that we, we have the need we have the capability to ensure that the tourist, the foreigner, the foreigner with money, has the best time possible in our country, right? Anything we get after that is just extra, right? But we, we are supposed to ensure, to do everything we can to make sure that the tourist has a good time, right? And how do we do that? We do that by being friendly, by smiling, by doing what we're supposed to do, right? And it, it's one thing if this identity was just our day job, right? Our hustle that we do to get through, you know, you go to work, you do what you do, and then you go home, right? But no, we've internalized this. We have told ourselves that this is our culture, right? This friendly, happy, helpful person is our culture. It's who we are, right? And we reap what we see as rewards from this, right? We call ourselves a successful economy. We say that we are successful politically, right? Because we are so friendly, because we are so hospitable, because we don't walk the boat, right? Because of all of this, we get to reap these rewards, right? And on top of that, right, there's the tourist aspect of it, right? And as long as we're friendly and nice and smiling, the tourists will keep coming, right? And we get to continue to get loans to buy our Hondas and to take our vacations. Right? But further than that, we use this identity to distinguish ourselves from other people in the Caribbean. So Bahamians are peaceful. Bahamians are helpful and friendly. Right? It's the Jamaicans and Haitians who are violent. Right? Isn't, isn't that the story we hear? Who's, who's committing all the crimes in this country? It's not the peaceful Bahamians. It's the violent Jamaicans. It's the violent Haitians, right? And this is part of the narrative that we tell ourselves. It's part of what we use to keep ourselves isolated and insulated and on a pedestal, right? And we get to blame the others for our problems, right? It feeds our xenophobia, right? And I always find it interesting that, you know, we kind of accept that the Haitians are xenophobic, but xenophobia is the fear of all things for it, right? When you start, you know, choosing, oh, but this foreigner is okay, but this one isn't, you know, that's when you get into the realm of racism. Right? But that's, a, that's not what we're discussing, right, tonight. So um, we use this as a way to, you know, say that it's okay to be xenophobic. It's okay to not want these others in our society because these others are bringing a bad element, right? They're making us become violent and uneasy, right? And that's not who we have told ourselves we are as a people, right? And we, we use it as a way to look at the rest of the Caribbean as lesser, as lower than us, right? Not only figuratively, 
but literally, right, we look at the map and it's north oriented, right, which in itself is a part of colonialism and neocolonialism, right, and the countries on the top are on the top because that's where they belong. Politically, economically, culturally, the countries on top are on top, and those on the bottom are on the bottom because that's where they belong. Right, so if we continue to tell ourselves the story of, oh, we're peaceful, right? We're humble, we're hardworking, we're docile, right? And reap what we see as benefits in the form of tourism dollars, right? Then that gives us the right to say that, you know, these other countries, we want to be like those countries up there, not these countries down there, right? And that's part of the reason, I think, why well, part of the question for tonight is, um, you know, could we see something like a Burma Moon Riot happening again? Right. I don't know. I don't know. But based on how we carry ourselves in the international arena and locally here on our, our pebbles in the Atlantic, right, we tend to take a second, a second spot to people who we perceive to be better than us economically, intelligent, you know? So when we talk about the Haitian Revolution, so I'm a um, part-time professor at the College of the Bahamas, and after 14 weeks right, of talking with my students, you know, discussing different things, talking about political economy, you know, we're recapping. And, you know, I say, let's not forget Haiti and the great debt that we owe them, right, because of their revolution. And a student says to me, um, to the nods of her classmates, well, did that really get Haiti in here? Look at them now, right? Maybe they should have just sat small and waited for slavery to end, right? So besides proving that I'm an utter failure at teaching, right, um, that illuminated something to me, right? Because we, we see our country as successful. That's what, that's what we, we have decided that this thing that we're living in is a success. Maybe we hit some bumps here and there, but by sitting small and having those quiet revolutions and, you know, and by being polite and civil, we, we have got into a place that's better than these other countries who always want to fight. Right? So we are now currently in a situation where um, we are economically unstable, right? The economy is nowhere near in the control of Bahamian people. Talk about majority rule all you want, right? The, the power structures that existed before majority rule still exist today. Right? We are in many, many ways in the same situation that we were in prior to the Burma rule riots, right? And we have a government, right, that in no way I can see is doing or will do anything to really fix the issues that we have in this country. In fact, they are perhaps one of the biggest issues we have in the country, right? So, but we still, in turn, when we talk about change, when we talk about doing something different, right? It's never, we don't want to upset the apple cart. It's always, oh, vote them out, right? Okay, so I'm going to fix this problem by voting for the DNA. Okay, I'm going to fix this problem by voting for the PLP, right? And I think part of that reason is because of this narrative we tell ourselves. In addition to being friendly and docile and humble, right? We are people of faith, aren't we? And people of faith are rewarded with profits. They don't have to actually do the work, right? You sit down and you pray and you wait. And then God sends the person who gives you all of the answers, and that person leads you to where you're supposed to be. Right, so I apologize if I'm coming across too cynical, you know, um, but I only have 10 minutes, so I have to get to the meat of it right away. You know, so um, I don't know. I don't know if it's possible that we'll have another um, Burma Road riot. I am not saying that that would solve our problems. But I do think that the kind of mentality that's needed for a riot or a change to occur is perhaps not the kind of mentality that collectively we have as Bahamians today. And I'll end there. Thank you.
very much. You even had a minute or so left. Um, I'm sure I'm